two of our faith journey. As we said, this month we are talking about faith. And what is faith? Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And so as we were talking about last week, there are many accounts in, in the historical document, the Bible, that demonstrate what has happened throughout time, throughout history, how God has really encountered with people, met with people, and how people got to see Jesus live. They saw him die, but they also saw him raised to life again. While tackling on that point, uh, we're going to be talking about someone who wrote a lot of the New Testament. Some of you might know who this is. Uh, a man by the name of Saul. Now, originally, this man's name was Saul, and later he gets a name change, but we'll be talking about that in, in time to come. Um, but there was this, this student, Saul, and he was a real devout believer. He was a Jewish uh, believer, and he studied for quite a while with um, a really sought-out teacher, Gamaliel, and, and he spent a lot of time uh, learning course the Torah and and just studying and spent many hours well of course when Jesus was uh, living then was crucified and then the believers said that he had raised from the dead a lot of the Jewish people at the time were struggling with this uh, that they would claim that he was really the Messiah they thought there was no way and and Saul, he wanted to get to the bottom of this. People were sharing that Jesus rose from the dead. And, and there, were, there was an outrage. He had studied so much with many of the religious leaders and had become this big religious leader himself. He'd been known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. It sort of became a personal mission. He was bent and bound to hunt out these people and, and to kind of say, no, 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 it, this isn't right. You know, that there's no way this happened. Um, and he would persecute them. He would have them uh, thrown in jail. And so this, at this point in history, he'd ask Caiaphas, the high priest, if he could go to Damascus and investigate all these believers that were sharing the good news and, and it was just spreading like wildfire. Well, he got his permission to do that, but something happened on the way to Damascus that he never would have expected. If we look in the book of Acts, in the historical account of Acts, chapter 9, Verse 4, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he, Saul, fell to the ground, and he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go to the city and you will be told what you must do. Now the men that were traveling with Saul stood up, they were speechless because they heard this sound, but they didn't see anyone. And then Saul got up from the ground, but when he got up and he opened his eyes, he actually couldn't see. You know, he couldn't deny what took place. He literally saw Jesus. His friends led him to Damascus, and he stayed at the home of a man named Judas. And for three whole days, Saul was blind. He couldn't eat or drink anything. Saul just couldn't deny what took place. He saw Jesus. He had seen for himself that Jesus was alive. He was very, very much alive. Could it be that everything that Jesus' followers said was true was really true? Was Jesus actually the Son of God? This is what, what Saul was pondering. Saul's life dramatically changed that day. Even though he was now physically blind, it was like something had happened and he could... He could finally see everything a lot clearer, even though he physically just, he couldn't see, but, but
but it, things made sense. He had been wrong the whole time, but it took him becoming blind to come to this conclusion. You see, knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. Everything that Saul thought he knew about Jesus that day changed, and it would never be the same again. Remember our verse this month, Hebrews 11, chapter 1, says this, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. But God gave Paul right here this opportunity to actually see Jesus. And then he became physically blind. You know, it's interesting. I, I know of people who are in other countries that have, have never been told about Jesus. That they say that they had never heard about Jesus. They had never heard about salvation. And yet, they had an angel appear before them and share the good news. And they came into a relationship with God the Father and ended up becoming missionaries in the land they were. It's amazing when things like that happen. It's amazing when God shows up. And sometimes we need our circumstances to get to such a place so we can see clearly. It took Saul being blinded to finally be able to see Jesus, to finally realize that his situation, what he thought, was not actually what it was. You know, the last couple of months have been really um, a struggle. And I've heard a lot of people say, I just don't know what to do. I've heard a lot of people say, I can't understand. And I, I fully understand why people would say, I don't understand why things are happening in my, in my life. I don't understand why everything's a mess. But you know what? A lot of things are a mess. But you know what that drives me to? Thank you, God, because you are trying to sharpen my vision. Kind of like horses, um, whenever you, you take them out for a ride, some people have girds on their horses so that they're not looking to the left or right. I kind of feel this is our time in history. This is our time right now for a generation to have these girds put on so that we can focus on Jesus. Just how Peter, or sorry, just how Saul needed to be blinded in order to see, sometimes we need some of these struggles in order to clearly see God. And so I want to encourage you, if you're going through struggle, say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? I might not understand what's happening. I might be frustrated, but what are you trying to teach me? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that even though we go through tough situations, we know that in our tough situations, that's when we get the most stretching and growing time. And so I thank you. Even though it's uncomfortable, I thank you because I know you have a plan. I thank you because I know you are teaching us something. I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you, Father God, and do whatever is needed so that we could have a clear focus of what you are trying to speak to us. And I pray, Father God, in the days ahead, that you would open the eyes of our heart, that we would truly see you. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, we're not finished our time together. The song today is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And the reason I chose this is, is because life has struggles, but God has a plan. And in those struggles, we can grow. But we need to remember we're not alone. We can lean on the everlasting arms. This song says, what a joy divine. What a fellowship leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning, leaning. 
leaning because I'm safe and secure. I am safe and secure from all these different harms because there's nothing that can harm my soul or my spirit because I'm leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. So let's join together and worship God singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Until next time, take care and God bless. Yeah.